Hey everybody, how are you doing? My name is Okori Johnson, also known as OK Cello, and I'm here today with Stephanie Voss of Voss Violins here in Atlanta, and we are going to talk a little bit about her instrument, uh, the Scala Corto. I am amazingly in debt to Stephanie and her team for loving my cello uh, that just recently had a tragedy back to life. Uh, and they did an excellent job, and it sounds better than ever. Uh, but in our, thank you very much, I think, uh, <laughs> but in our conversations, um, I got a chance to learn a lot about what she has been working on, namely this instrument called the Scala Corto. And uh, she's going to talk more in depth about it, but essentially it's a full-size instrument with a shortened string length so that people with uh, small hands or maybe people who have had injuries don't have to work quite as hard to produce the same richness and quality of sound that you would get on a full-size instrument. She let me hold on to it for about a week and to play some and to get used to it. And I'm here to talk with her about my experience and about the instrument and to play a little bit for you today. So um, I'm going to get started and uh, we'll, we'll see what kind of comes from this. I'm excited. Me too. All right. <laughs> Let's go. sings. Um, playing on the D string and on the A string, I feel like the overtones really kind of linger and express themselves. Um, and uh, I can be really expressive. Um, I can kind of punch through and I can pull back. I think it's very responsive. Uh, and the most notable thing is I'm not killing myself <laughs> on my left hand. I wasn't playing a ton of extensions, but um, I do find that this allows me to do things somewhat effortlessly uh, that I might have to work a lot more well, with a decent amount more effort on my on my full size shell. Although I really love my full size shell. So um, why don't you talk to me a little bit about the idea of the Scala Corto? Where did it come from, uh, and what made you decide that you wanted to bring it to market? Well, the idea is actually about three hundred years old. Mm. Um, the old Italians in Brescia. Uh, around 1600, Gaspar da Salo, uh, a very important Brescian violin maker, uh, made a cello with exactly these dimensions. Mm. The string length, uh, the bridge position. Uh, and uh, by studying old instruments and working in restoration as well as making new instruments, um, I came to, the con came to wonder why we abandoned um, all these old um, ideas and uh, standardized the string length, the bridge position, the neck length, everything is standardized these days. And if you follow the historic um, development of instrument making, this all is a very recent um, development that happened uh, during the industrialization. So. As soon as we, not one person was making an instrument, but many people were involved making the instrument, mm. there had to be a standard. And so in the factories, the standardization took foothold. And uh, in all those schools in Europe, in violin making schools, and I studied in a violin making school in Germany uh, at first too, uh, 
these measurements were kind of really knocked into our heads. Don't forget, this is how it has to be. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason for that is uh, people who went to school earlier always had to uh, work in factories or in more industrial settings. We don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I was working on a, a very old Brescian viola with a very short string length. and. Uh, I had at the same time a bunch of clients coming through and they all were uh, overextended. They all scaled down from a full size cello into a 7 8 size. And mm. I thought, and they were all disappointed because once you played a larger scale instrument and you have to pull back mm -hmm. and the body size is smaller, very often, unless you have an unlimited financial resource, very often. Uh, you will be disappointed mm. because there's just less sound coming from it, mm. and uh, I thought that has not be has not to be this way, mm. and uh, so that's why I came up with this design, which is actually not really a Brescian design. Uh, the Brescian makers had much uh, closer seas uh, bouts, and um, I wanted to have a little bit more space. Mm -hmm. uh, for the bow, so you don't hit the upper corner. Mm -hmm. So this is stretched up a little bit on a on a on a Gasparo da Salo. The upper corner would sit more like down here. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I I made a little bit of improvements, or I thought that mm -hmm. would be improvements. I also um, stretched out the peg box, so the C peg here is actually sitting higher, measured from the floor. Uh, then on a regular full-size cello. And that, what does that accomplish? Um, it falls further behind your uh, neck, so uh -huh. it doesn't poke you right in here, which a lot of cellos do, yeah. and then uh, you do body contortions to avoid that poking. Uh-huh, <laughs> uh -huh. I know what you and mean, especially uh, on something like a 7 8 I was playing a 7 8 the other day and right. I felt like I was being kind of pinned in. Right. Just right. because everything didn't hit where it was supposed to. Exactly. Full size. And because the neck is shorter on this instrument, um, to compensate for that, I made the peg box a little bit longer put and set the C, C peg a little bit further up. All right. So that makes it overall more comfortable to play. Got it, got it. Um, tell me a little bit about who's interested in this instrument. All, all kinds of folks, okay. actually. Okay. And I was surprised. Um, uh, at first we thought, well, obviously those that are very petite. Mm -hmm. um, um, I have small hands myself, uh -huh. so um, I, that's one of the reasons why I thought, well, this is actually a good idea. Uh, people with large hands that don't need these features usually are saying, well, when they play these instruments, I don't feel any difference. Of mm, course not, mm. uh, because you don't feel stretched out yeah, when yeah, you play yeah. full size. Those who have smaller hands do feel the difference immediately. I've got pretty small hands as well, yeah, yeah, it, and I definitely notice the difference. Yeah. Um, I'm able to... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I was always thinking and working really hard. Yeah, and, and just to say, I mean, the string length is actually shorter than a 7-8 size. Mm, so okay. it is a little bit longer than a 3 quarter size, okay. but shorter than a 7-8 size. Okay. So, yeah. so it is significantly shortened and uh, should make a huge difference, especially from the first to the third position uh, at the channels. So okay. Uh, so uh, obviously the further up you go, uh, the more you shrink the notes together and then it's not as obvious. Not as obvious a difference. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'd like to play like an, another piece if I could. Yes, please. Uh, that first one was an improvisation. This one is something I wrote called In Memoriam. Um, and I was hoping maybe if we get a chance to do this again, yeah. maybe with another instrument, yeah. I could play the same piece so that we could use it as a reference. That would be wonderful. Okay, okay, so I'll play this. Um. <laughs> Thank you. 
fun. Thank you. No problem, no problem. So, um, I'm excited about this. I need to figure out how I can get in the market <laughs> to purchase an instrument like this. But, but if someone were interested, how would they, how would they do so? Or what do they need to know about cost and, and that kind of thing? Well, they, um, we, design, we had a, a special case designed for the instrument, mm -hmm. uh, which is made of carbon fiber. Oh, wow. So it's pretty light? It's a very lightweight case. Okay. And uh, considering that people who play these instruments mm -hmm. may not be six foot tall mm -hmm. and uh, want to lift a 15, 16 pound case around. And uh, so we have this case designed for, for this uh, cello specifically, and uh, I think it looks really nice. Right. And the entire package, including the carbon fiber case, is uh, 7,500. Wow, 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 so that's we, really affordable. So, yeah, and we, we did so because, I mean, anybody can go to their favorite violin maker and say, hey, make me an instrument mm -hmm. that has a shorter string length. But uh, if you don't have the 25,000 plus that it would take to do so, um, this would be your next be best option to do so, to find something like this. What What do you hope that this instrument kind of accomplishes? What would you like to see for the Scala Porta and for the people who are interested in it? Well, um, it already has opened doors for folks that thought they cannot play anymore because uh, arthritis. Um, mm. Um, or they're battling arthritis and they weren't able to practice anymore. Mm -hmm. um, we also um, um, we have a few clients that are very petite and uh, are very serious musicians but never could compete uh, because they were limited sound-wise with the smaller scale instruments mm -hmm. and uh, with the larger body they are now able to compete uh, in international music competitions too. Yeah. So um, that is that is already happening mm -hmm. and um, that just shows me that uh, there is some future in this type of instrument in wonderful, the market. Wonderful, wonderful. And how long has your instrument been on the market now? Um, just about a, a good year now. A good year. Okay, so yeah. this is the very beginning of it. This is the very beginning of it. Yes. And how long did it take from con concept to market? For you, like when did you come up with the idea? Um, well, the initial drawing I made—I mean, the idea was was uh, um, probably four years ago. Okay. I got the idea. Okay, gotcha. Uh, then I followed through with the drawing, uh -huh. and then I I talked to so many people in the business, and nobody was interested. Uh. And uh, everybody said, "Oh, now we have seven, eight size." Cellos. And I said, well, I don't want a 7-8 size cello. Yeah. I want a full size cello with a shorter string neck. Yeah. And everybody said, I, I talked to manufacturers in Germany, I talked to manufacturers everywhere, and they all said, oh no, we have our 7-8 size, why don't you buy those? And I said, uh, I don't want to buy those. I want to have an instrument that provides the musician with the tool that the, the musician needs. Okay. And um, So that all happened within the last four years? Yeah, and then uh, about two years ago, we finally found a very nice small workshop. I did partner up with somebody, with a good friend, and uh, uh, Ziggy Schaltyshek uh, of Tonarelli. Tonarelli, yeah. Tonarelli Music, and uh, I, he's a cellist himself. He is. So uh, yeah. I uh, told him about my idea of Scala Corta, and he immediately said, I know just the shop to go to. And so we had a sample of five instruments made and um, they got here and they had not yet the redesigned pack box, they had um, a, a shorter pack box and um, they were all sold within three months. Wow. And we thought, okay, maybe we are onto something. I think you are. So. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, I think I'm going to play us out. Thank right. you so much for you, letting me hold on to the instrument for a week and for talking with me about it. Um, I always love coming to the shop because I learned so much not only about my instrument but all the instruments that you have here. Well, thank you so much for playing on it yeah, and no making your beautiful music. Oh, thank which you. I very, very much enjoy. Thank you. And thank appreciate you. it. No problem, no problem. So, uh, this is Boss Violins. We're here in Atlanta. Do you have a number? Or is it, we're in Boss Violins. We're here in Atlanta. Is there a number that we that you want them to know or a website? 404-876-8617. You can get us Monday through Friday from 9 till 6 and Saturdays from 9.30 until 2. 
All right. Thank you, Stephanie. Right. Thank you. Uh, I'll play this out, and uh, thank you guys for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thank you.